today we're going to be showing you something totally different on our channel. We've got a Dixie Chopper Zero Turn mower here. We're just playing with this mower a little while. It's got a good story. I'm going to tell you more about that in a minute. Right now I can't get Christy off of it, so... Dixie Chopper! We should talk just a little bit about where they came from and where they're going. I don't know this whole story, but I do know some of the high level of what's gone on. Now Dixie Chopper was invented here in Indiana, actually not too many miles from here. It was family owned for many, many years. Then sometime around 2013, uh, they sold the company to another company that let's say kind of ran them into the ground. At the end of last year, uh, Dixie Chopper essentially was going out of business. Well, one of the original family members now works for Rhino Ag. You've seen the Rhino Ag TS10 and several other Rhino attachments on our channel. After this original family owner found out that Dixie Chopper was going to go under, he worked with his parent company and they bought Dixie Chopper. So Dixie Choppers now are going to be made in Gibson City, Illinois, where all of the Rhino Ag equipment is made. Now this Dixie Chopper that Christie's on right now is a Blackhawk series. It's above the entry level consumer series, but it's it's not the you know the high end commercial series uh, or even close to it. It's got a Kawasaki engine in it. It's 22 horsepower. It runs really smoothly. We're actually pretty impressed with this machine. We're not going to keep this machine for long. Dixie Chopper has decided to donate it uh, to. Well, I tell you what, we're going to reserve that story for another episode. Meanwhile, I'm afraid I'm going to have to get Christy one of her own Dixie Choppers. She seems to really be liking this. It's got a 48 inch cut. Uh, that's really not as big as we would want for our own property. But I think she's kind of enjoying uh, running it out here. This is the second time we've mowed with it. Actually, it's you might say it's the third time we've mowed with it. The first time Christy used it for all the trimming while I mowed the big part of the yard with one of the bigger mowers. The second time we reversed that, she took the bigger mower and I did some of the trimming. I really enjoyed using this uh, particular unit around the pine trees or uh, spruce trees, whatever they are, uh, going down through the, through the driveway lot there. Uh, I found it very easy to get around. Now there was some negative to me. I felt like I had to really get my, myself pushed right into the spruce tree to get it all trimmed. But I was able to get it all trimmed. I mean, I was able to dig in there and trim closer than what I ever had before. Speaking of digging in there, what's going on here? You think you're going to get a bite of that microphone? That's, that's not working for me, Mary. I don't mind if you want to be part of the limelight, but you can't just eat the microphone. No, you can't just eat the microphone. That's not going to work. Let's get a closer look. This is fun. You like it? Yeah. I I have to get used to this. Yeah. I saw a guy trying to use one hand. Well, there's no way I can use one hand. So I've it's got to. It's a little to, too far apart for you to use one hand. Too far apart. I've got to hold it straight. I find can it. Can you like lock your hands together somehow or? That's not very comfortable. Okay. I don't know. So I just end up putting them in the middle and I find it hard to get a straight <laughs> line because it's so bumpy in our backyard. Yeah, so as you're bouncing on the seat a as little I'm bit. As I'm bouncing, my arms are just necessary. And I, if I h try to hold them real stiff, it it kind of hurts my shoulders and stuff. Yeah. So, but I feel like I can um, trim really good with this one. Probably better than the tractors, but about the same as with Vinny and the mower out front. Oh, really? You think you can trim as well with Vinny as this one? Yes, because the mower's out front, I think. Yeah. Well, and you, I'm more used to Vinny right now. Well, I think that may be part of it. Yeah. But one thing I notice is you can turn around a lot quicker with this thing. I can, yes. So I, I think that's what's going to make it faster on a on a more trimming job. I noticed that when I was going around the 
those spruce trees, those evergreens out there. I could just spin right around spin and be around. going the other direction yeah. really quickly. I was just worried. I didn't want to spin too hard because I don't want the tire to make a bald spot. Um, yeah, there's practice involved in that. Uh, yeah. I had a little trouble with uh, leaving a bald spot and it's slowing down before you turn and then making sure you pull back on that one so that it's going backwards okay. while the other one's turning. You don't just want to leave one stopped and try to spin around on that one. You want right. to be going kind backwards. Of that, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Now, I'm not very good at it. I think that's going to take some practice to be able to get to be able to make those turns better. Practice. But. I think once you've used this for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, and especially if you use it every time you mow, you it would be faster than a tractor mower. Yeah. Um, now, I don't think that I can run at full speed because of our, we've got our septic back here and it's real wavy and it's bumpy. If you had flat, no bumps, you could just go really fast. Yeah. I, I'm just not that great with it yet, but I, I do like the concept. I do. Uh, I don't think a 48 inch would be large enough for us. The concept that I like is good and bad. It's a single purpose machine. Yeah. It mows. For me, since I do the mowing, it will be great to have this in the shed and I could go mow whenever I wanted to mow and I yeah. didn't have to get the backhoe off or the loader off or have you switch out an attachment for me. I could just go mow. A lot of people debate whether they should get a, a mower deck for their 1025R or other subcompact tractor or whether they should get a, a separate zero turn. When we had only half an acre, we didn't get a separate mower. No. Even though you could buy some consumer level mowers for a, around the same price as that mower deck. And the main reason for me was uh, storage. You know, there's, there's many reasons why you might choose one approach or the other. And, and for us, storing an extra machine, even if it was cost effective to purchase it, it just wasn't very easy for us to, to no. store. Guess who's coming? Come on up, Mary. Come on. It wouldn't be right if you weren't in every video. Oh, Mary's already been in this one. He wanted to eat my microphone. Oh. Okay, so why don't you guys get off and let me mow? It does have a nice step here on the side. Yeah, you can step on this deck rather yeah. than some mowers, uh, they say no step, but that yeah. one specifically says you can step, step there. Now, when I start this machine, I find that I don't need to choke it, but maybe just a little bit. It seems that every different engine has its peculiarities, right, as to how much choke you might need. Uh, this is not a fuel injected engine, it's a carbureted engine. Um, it's a 22 horsepower Kawasaki, runs very smooth. It takes just a little bit of choke, but not much. And after it's been running, probably none at all. Now, I find that it's hard to start the mower deck at an idle. It a lot of times would kill the engine. I felt the same thing when we had the Kawasaki engine on the Ventrac that we had. It didn't have much power at that very lowest throttle. So I give it just a little bit of throttle before I start the mower. Then I get my racing glasses on, got my hearing protection in, I'm ready to go. Now I don't know if you can hear me while we're mowing here, but probably some of, uh, what you can hear my voice kind of indicates just how much we're bouncing. There is some degree of bounce with this door. I find the high back seat to be very comfortable. This seat is not a suspension seat, but the seat itself is a very nice seat. Quite cushioned. Now I can go around our work in here. No problem at all. Now I'm not very good at going back. I can't go straight when I'm going back. Hardly at all. This thing is a hoot. It's fun to just get out there and whirl around and you don't even have to have a plan. You can spin around and go the other direction in just a heartbeat. A lot more flexibility in that sense than a tractor-based mower. But I don't think it's that easy. I think it's hard to know what the optimal solution is for every single situation. We just explained why for us having two separate units just wasn't a, a good idea when we had a, that half acre property. Now, maybe it's something we should consider. With five and a half acres and with two of us to mow, 
having a zero turn to help with some of this trimming might, might be just exactly what we would need. I should talk a little bit about some of the features of this mower. This lever here that you push with your foot, this is the deck height adjustment. So you, you can pick up and lower the deck with this lever here. Then there's a pin right here that sets what the height is. And there's four banks of four holes each. These holes are in quarter inch increments for deck height. So this right here is the one inch mark. So that's five, four, three, two, and one. This is four and three quarters, three and three quarters, two and three, you see what I mean? So this is the one inch, three quarter, half inch, and quarter. So you have quarter inch increments, very finely set. You pick it up, okay. you pull this pin out, and you set it whatever height you want. We have it set at 3.5 right now. That's usually about how we mow. Um, I don't know, maybe a little high, but we really like it that way. We like a, a nice, thick, tall grass after it's been cut. Other people like it shorter, I understand. Over here we have a lever. I'm gonna push it with my right foot because I need the left foot to release it. But this foot control lever will close the output chute, essentially forcing the deck to, to mulch at least somewhat, and at the same time not sending grass shooting out across something you don't want it shot across, like your garden or maybe your driveway. To release it, you just push down on that lever a little bit, let it go like this. Now, when that is closed, you can also pick up this chute on the side. So with the chute picked up, you have that narrow trimming capability on both sides. Now, I don't really know how I can do that without getting off. Maybe I would need to drill a hole and put a rope into it, but it will stay folded up. Gravity holds it up. Now, I don't know whether it's gonna be able to handle the bouncing or not. If you get that folded up, now you have a good trimming surface on both sides of the mower. I wanna talk a little about the controls over here. We have the throttle right here. It works very nicely. It's not too hard to push. It's, it's easily located. We have a electronic fuel gauge here. The fuel tank is large. I don't know what the specs of it. Uh, I believe I was able to get close to eight gallons in it. I just kept putting gas in it. I filled it up one time. We've mowed, I think, well, we've mowed three different times but not our whole yard each time. So, uh, and it's still at half a tank. So it's electronic fuel gauge. There's an hour meter here, an RPM meter, uh, the choke lever and the mower uh, engagement, PTO engagement there. There's an empty spot here for a rocker switch and another small round spot for some sort of a toggle switch of some sort. I don't know if there is additional options available on these mowers that are just not included in this one or if that's for you know, user enhancements. I saw a guy the other day that had put an electronic switch for his sprayer in a slot similar to this. He was pulling his sprayer behind a zero turn. On the other side, we have the fuel tank access. And like I say, the fuel tank goes all the way underneath. Okay, so there's a lever right here used in conjunction with this foot pedal that allows you to lock the deck all the way up. This would be for like a road situation. So I push this pedal all the way down, then I can release it and let back and it goes into the mowing position set by the pin as I showed you before. I push the pedal all the way down, hold it good and tight, then I can pull it back here and it will lock it up. As for deck leveling, there's easy threaded bolts on each side. You could level this deck without hardly even getting on your knees. Uh, very nice situation there. I think I would be that guy that would actually uh, poke a hole in this and maybe tie a rope to it so I could pull it up and if I want to trim with that left side, I'll quickly put the mulcher down, pull up my gate, and trim. <laughs> so I find I can trim under the tree better than I can with Johnny. Obviously, the rops are lower, and I have to kind of go in and out. I was trying not to break any of our branches. Um, we might trim that a little bit, um, or I could lay these, fold these over, but that takes time. So but I found that I can trim under there. I just have to watch what I'm doing. And it's still faster, I think, than with Johnny.
Christy, I got a question for you. Sure. We were back on a half an acre, maybe even a little less than a half an acre in Carmel. Think before Johnny. Okay. The Sabre? The Sabre. What would you have thought if we'd have had this thing instead of the Sabre? I'd have liked it. It probably would have been a lot faster. Yeah, the, the little tractor mower, the, the entry level mower that you can get at uh, the big box store. Right. This would have been mowing. Luxury. Like royalty. Yes. Although royalty doesn't mow, do they? No, they just have their servants do it. That's why you sent me out to mow most of the time. What? Actually, it was because you had a job and... Yeah, you always enjoyed mowing. I did, yeah. You still do? Yeah, I do. Why? Because it's relaxing. It's satisfying. I can see where I've been usually. Yeah. And it's not my normal jobs, I guess. And I can just think about different things. A lot of times I think about organizing a drawer or a kitchen or a closet or something. Something unrelated to the task at hand because right. it's... Right, because it's, it's not totally mindless. You have to watch what you're doing, but it does leave you time to think about something else. Or I can uh, put on my acetunes and listen to music and... Um, yeah. You know, I kind of a lot of times don't even like to listen to music because, like you say, it gives you time to just think. But I do love the isotunes because they, they get rid of that, that noise and it makes it a lot easier on my ears. Yeah. I've had too much noise over the years and I, and I have trouble hearing. So these isotunes, noise isolating earbuds are really nice for that. Yeah. Um, link in the description on those. Now, I'm thankful for a couple of things here with this particular mower. The first thing is I'm thankful that Dixie Chopper's back up and going. Yes. You know, a proud American brand, actually a proud Indiana brand. Yeah. Um, now it's going to be made in Illinois, uh, but still a, a, a USA brand that's that's getting another chance, and and it's getting chance by a a, a company and a, an owner now that really wants to make them uh, their yeah. finest again, right? Yes, exactly. Make your mower great again, right? And uh, I'm really excited about that for Dixie Chopper, and I'm also excited that they let us try one. Yeah, I mean, I'd this... always wonder. Yeah. Well, we get a lot of comments. Oh, you should get a ZTR for the mowing. Yeah, you gotta have a zero turn. Nothing better than a zero turn. Well, now we've had a chance to try one. Uh, may not be the last chance we get. Hope not. Um, we've really enjoyed it. Uh, I think there's some things we would do differently in our yard even. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that. When you plan your landscaping and around your property, if you knew what mower you had, you might not make it as curved or as a sharp of a curve, or maybe you would make all timbers that were straight, I don't know, Yeah. to make it easier for you. I really want to eliminate much need for a weed eater. That would be good because, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm sad that you have to do so much weed eating. I know, it really breaks your heart, doesn't it? No, oh, it does. I'm sad for you, you know. This is a nice mower. Um, I think it's in the $5,000 range for this one. I don't know, maybe five to six. I, I really don't know the price. Uh, we've only got it, I think we're probably finished with it now. We've, we've mowed three times with it. We've, we've got good familiarity with it. I'd be happy to have this mower. Yeah. Hey, stay tuned for our next episode with this mower. It may not be coming up immediately, but we have just a very interesting story about where this mower is going. And yeah. uh, I think you'll like that. I know we're excited about yeah, it and it makes fun. us feel even better about Dixie Chopper and, and, and where the company's going. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for doing the mowing, Christy. Sure. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim.